Right out of the gate. It's amazing. It's like we're starting to know what we're doing. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Well, I'm using the new home studio system. So this is the first test run. So All right. we'll see. It's going to its own recorder. No more in the computer. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, because now, because the computer, I, what I want to do is go live with us with YouTube eventually. Right. And if I record on the computer, it'll take up too much computer power. I want all the <clears throat> computer power being for the video. Oh, this way it's not choppy. Yeah, as best we could. This good microphone. Look, look, that microphone looks nice. Oh, it's nice, dude. I got to get you one of these. It's kind of like what my son has. It's just not that same. My son has like a five hundred dollar microphone. Oh no, this ain't that. <laughs> like he has, like you know, like I don't know. He spent a lot of money. He's got like one of these big like things that go around it, and like a like a like a buffer thing. Like it's huge. He does it for rapping and for music. So. Yeah, this one's like eighty bucks. Oh, okay, which it looks like it's expensive, but it's it looks expensive, but sounds expensive. Oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, have you used it at all? This is the first time you used. I it. I did a voiceover. I made a little commercial for James's uh, New Year's Eve show. Oh, nice! And uh, put that on YouTube or whatever what? for him. So, what they had like a picture of the event, and you're just talking over the the picture. They had nothing. I had to just what I did was I took their, his graphics. Because there's like right. no video of the comedy shop, right? So right. I just took uh, anybody that was famous that like you know has a name, and I put like uh, right. yeah, yeah. I took off James's page like Voss, Florentine, uh, Gilbert, anybody, yeah, right. that, and then yeah, yeah. but then just to open it up, like come to one of New Jersey's blah 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 comedy venues. Or I forget the script I wrote, and then I just went generic with New Year's Eve double headliner, blah blah blah. Got it. That Got way, it. I told him I'm like I, you want to use the the names because just to catch people's attention right if you throw like joe fernandez up there they're gonna be like right the i'm not going there <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, who is that the way you're telling jokes yeah the commercial the elite <laughs> like listen your little ads you make for shows that could say joe fernandez is here yeah, yeah but the commercial needs to be like pulling people that don't know you're there absolutely and my yeah, face yeah. ain't doing that oh. no <laughs> Like what? They offer video editing services too? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Joe's going to be video editing live there? <laughs> oh, and he does comedy. Yes, yes. Is that guy running for council? Oh, my God. oh, that's a comedy show. <laughs> yeah. He looks tired. It's going to be a nap time show? <laughs> Jesus, my headphones are so loud. That's that. Yeah, it's nice. Good stuff. I'll have to get you a, a nice microphone so we can get you off your uh, your buds and shit. Yeah, well, I mean, like, like my microphone shop, and I'm gonna when I'm home, I can use my son's. Oh, okay. We, we hooked it up, and he showed me how to use it, so I'm gonna be able to use his. Nice. <clears throat> he just won't let me take it to Vegas. Yeah, because it'll wind up on the blackjack in- table. Or <laughs> absolutely, you're gonna see it in porn stars next week. <laughs> You're going to be in next week's episode of Pawn Stars. You're like, what can I get for my son's microphone? Twenty dollars <coughs> sounds like a good deal. Just follow you walking across the street to the Wheel of Fortune slot. Da, fuck. Not one spin. Not one spin. That's for one spin. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm, I'm I'm free and available to do this podcast in the middle of the day today. Well, yeah, I figured we were talking before, and I'm like, you, you're you not doing it Monday because you're flying home Monday, and I have yeah, a busy yeah. schedule Tuesday, so we're not going to be able to bang this out till Wednesday. Week's half over. Bang this yeah. shit out on Friday. I'll upload it Monday morning. There we go. Boom. See, that's the type of dedication we have to you, listeners. We want to yeah. make sure you get this out every week. We've been quite consistent, unlike our old podcast. Absolutely. That's, I think, one of the payoffs. To uh, I mean, one of the reasons why we have people who are uh, constantly listening because they know that's going to be there. Well, I think doing it over Skype helped because 
us trying to get together in person, it was just an impossibility. Never, never worked. We haven't even attempted that since this is working. No, we haven't. We haven't. We're like, why? This is great. <laughs> Like maybe once you get the back room built and you know you got a little spot and you're like, hey, you want to come over in the afternoon, grab some coffee? It's different. Totally different. No more in the car at the TikTok diner. Where you want to meet, like somewhere, yeah. No. <laughs> we try to do it when we're driving. <laughs> we try to do it drive <laughs> in the parking lot where people are looking at us, like, are you guys holding microphones? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing fucking showbiz shit. What are you, you doing? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. <laughs> Go get your disco fries. Leave us alone. Yeah, you'll know who we are one day, maybe. Probably not. <laughs> I wanna I'm not gonna say the kid's name. I don't know if you saw this. I almost wanted to comment on it, but I kinda like the kids. So I don't I, I I didn't want to I was gonna go off. I was I took it very personal. I don't know. I mean I took it personal. But I also wanted to speak up for the uh the little guys out there. Somebody put up a post about um if your podcast has more downloads than has more episodes than downloads, like than listeners. Yeah. Your your podcast is garbage. Ah. And I wanted to say like, well, if you're only doing stuff so Pete you get masses of people to listen to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then it should probably only be about fifteen podcasts rolling out there right now. Because you don't do, if you're not doing it because you want to do it and you want to put content out and you enjoy it, if your only reason to do anything in this business is to get huge returns, then you're gonna stay at LOL, bro. I yeah. Hate to break it here. I don't know who said that, but I saw. Like every time I hear a comic say that, it's like, dude, you do comedy and have no fans. You right. go do stand up every night. You're getting nothing out of it. Yeah, no. You're getting nothing. Even if your podcast, even if you're doing a podcast that's semi-successful, who cares what other people, if they're not, who gives a fuck if someone puts a podcast out? Like, I just, for me, listen, man, to the, if he's not going to listen to this podcast, but if he does and he knows who I'm talking about, I'm not even, I'm not even considering me and him in my, in our comedy in the same game. I know that I'm much better in being a stand-up comic. Right. So. I'm talking for the people who are young kids or like somebody who's just, you know, kind of new doing comedy or trying to do podcasts or trying shit, just trying different shit. Who are you to say what that because they don't have a certain number that it's garbage? Like, who are you? Listen, unless you're Mark Marin or somebody else that's been killing it, right. shut the fuck up, man. You're a copycat and you got nothing going on either. Not all well, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like I don't understand why you would make that point unless, unless somebody – snubbed him on a podcast or maybe say somebody said some shit about him. I don't even know what would make him say it. But if you're an arrogant dude that thinks your opinion matters about people's podcasts and you're just trying to get a bunch of people who probably don't do podcasts to jump on your post, be like, yeah, what a waste of time. There's a lot of people out there. They'll say it's a waste of time. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, like the woman I'm working with today, this week's nice lady, but our first conversation is like, ah, she's like, yeah, everybody's doing these podcasts. Like that's going to do something like I wanted to, uh, I'm, like I do a podcast and I don't do a podcast. I think it's going to help me get on fucking Letterman no. or, you know, you know, or, or to tonight's show. I do a podcast because I enjoy doing it and I like putting content out and it makes me feel like creative for some reason. Yeah. It makes you feel creative. Sometimes we come up with bits just from shooting the shit. Right. And you, Putting content out there for people that may have come to see you, some free content. Yeah, it's exactly. the easiest thing to do. These are the same people. I remember when I started comedy uh, was like around when, like when MySpace was starting to come, and then, yeah, yeah. and then all like the curmudgeon comics that weren't on it were like fucking MySpace and got to do this shit, and then like yeah, yeah. like all the things, oh YouTube, I got to do, and now. They're all behind. Now they're trying to do YouTube. Right. And they're yeah, realizing yeah. it's worth it. You know, you have to put yeah. content out there regardless right. of whether people are paying attention. Right. Because the one thing you put out that'll hit will make people. You know what I mean? You're not going right. to. No one's coming to find you without no. you giving and, them stuff. And if you do comedy, like you said, and you and you have people who fans, you know, like, wow, I really enjoyed your show. Maybe that's your problem. 
uh, if you're judging podcasts, maybe you don't have a ton of people coming up to you after shows going, man, I really loved your jokes, man. It really made me laugh. I enjoyed the night. Thank you for being hilarious. Maybe you don't have that happening, but I do sometimes. And those people don't live in the same state and they don't get to see me every single night. So putting out this content, sometimes they listen every once in a while and go, oh, I remember him. He's so funny. And they like to listen. Right. And it's better. It's better than st- like. Hey, let me tell you, there's a lot of comedians I listen to their podcast. I don't even listen to their stand up because they're just funny people. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's just a new way to reach an audience. Right. People just, I, you know, just people just bitching, moaning type motherfuckers. Yeah. You know what they're I mean? Just, yeah, bitch, moaning, judgmental, and have to put trash, talk shit about other comics and what they do, man. Who gives a fuck? And I, I didn't, I took it personal. I really didn't take it personal for our podcast. I took it more personal for like comics who will like who don't have as much like confidence in what they're doing. Yeah. And then they have to listen to these people judging just because, you know, they got a cut that the dude was on a commercial. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like maybe he thinks he has some clout and there's younger comics who may think he has clout. And like, I want to say like, he don't have any clout. Don't no. listen to him. No. Do whatever makes you happy. That's what I wanted to do. Like, just do whatever makes you happy. Who the fuck are you to say what is the result supposed to be? If you're just result driven and it's got to be big returns on everything you do, you're going nowhere, bro. Very little people have huge returns. That's a person that's probably got nothing going on. If you have stuff going on, you don't have time to, for that to bother you. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm too busy for shit to bother. Like when I, I, I was talking, I was hiking with Scott the other day, and I was saying I, I look at Facebook and, uh, like sometimes I see like I'm friends with comedians that I'm not even that close with in life. They're just whatever we friended each other, and I see their shit, yeah, yeah. Right. and I see the way people they 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 try to make like an analogy to comedy with everything, or like talk about it like a like in, and I was just like thinking if people with regular jobs talked about their jobs the way comedians do right like do carpenters shit on other carpenters like in a yeah. passive aggressive way right, you know right. next time you're hammering yeah <laughs> and i ask you for a nail don't be coming back to me from the other side of the wood just fucking do your job like <laughs> like like you know, like comics are always I like crit- these carpenters are using galvanized. What, yeah, what's what's up with using galvanized? <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna use galvanized now, at least have the respect of people that are above you to not do galvanized nails when I'm in the room. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, like, why do you need to constantly let people know you do comedy? Right, right, like. <laughs> you like you okay they follow you as a comedian you know what i mean but they're right. always like <laughs> you you post ads for your shows but yeah, like don't, knows. nobody wants the yeah. snarky room i just i find it to be silly i'm like but i guess most comedians most of their followers maybe are comedians so that shit yeah, works yeah, yeah. for them yeah, it's like their, their facebook is is all to the back of the room yeah they, you know, like it's like even your Facebook, your act is to the back of the room, and now your Facebook is to the back of the room. Like, stay in your lane, motherfucker. Stay yeah, yeah, in your yeah. lane. Do your thing, and don't. What, what the fuck are you yeah. doing? It just. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it just. I would love to do like a like a a skit, but like I was telling them, I'm like the skit only plays to comedians because no one else yeah. will get it. Yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like not even worth my time. Right. Because it'll no, play, it'll play to comedians. The ones who it makes fun of won't like it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like wasted oh, energy. Like it basically be just like them. But like putting way more effort into it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they at least got to laugh by just like typing. I'm like, what? Am I, am I actually doing lighting for this motherfucker? <laughs> I don't care that much. Well, the mother. But we say it, yeah. like when people like, you know, a lot, you know, all friends do talk, talk about it too. Like, you know, when, like comics, you know, just crushed it, killing it. And, or, you know what I mean? Those things like, um, yeah. like, um, well, I mean, all the shit that seems like, like, who are you talking to? Who is this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, right. Some, like some comics, you know, it'd be like a month from now, like, you know, 
just watching TV, saw something from the Borgata. Going to be there next month, man. I love playing the Borgata. Or, like, if you, like, if I post, you know what I hate, man? <laughs> when I post, all right, I'm at MGM, uh-huh. and someone has to come on that post, love that room. You, you, you're not here this week. Who gives a fuck? Stop trying to let everyone know that you as well play this room. Right. Get the fuck off the post, man. Yeah, eat, great. You love the room. I, I just don't dig that. I hate that. Yeah. Oh, you're in. You're at Jimmy's Yuck Yuck Shack. Oh, I love it there, man. That's the best. Tell Tell Jimmy I said hi. How about you just text Jimmy, and when the next time you're booked there, you can tell him hi. Why do you have to do that here? Do you need all my friends to know you play Yuck Yucks? Fine. Well, I'll tell him. You want me to tell him? Right. Get the fuck off this post, you insecure prick. Yeah. And I'm not saying, and I'm, I just, it, it, I see through it. I do not, I've never once, when someone posted something about a room, said something about that room. Yeah. I've, I, I did it recently. To what? What was it? Uh, Ken posted that, Ken Kranz posted he was opening for Bonnie at this theater in, uh, okay. in, uh, right. Bordentown. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's a really cool theater. I mean, I've played there, but I didn't say I didn't. You didn't play there. I mean, he. Is, I did play there. But I didn't. Oh, you did. I, I didn't put that in the post. I just kind of said it's a cool theater. I didn't say oh, I okay. played there too. Cool theater, you know. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, then I assumed Ken would think I played there. No, I by me that. just saying it's a cool theater. Right, right, right. <laughs> I actually thought about that theater to record in, but it's just out of the fucking nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I don't fucking know. It's even worse than middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, you're breaking up on me. You're losing. I'm sorry. Your service is low. My service is low? Yeah. How do you know what my service is? Because your face is all chopped up and shit. But how do you know that's my service? Because I'm, I'm right by my... I'm I'm not in hotel service. I'm right in my home network, which is awesome. <laughs> don't know if you know that. Oh, but anyway, we, we were just saying how, you know, comics always post something to do with comedy or something like not do with comedy, but like some kind of judgmental on comics. Like in the, like I would say, like the guys posting, about, uh, you know, telling them they killed, but then other guys posting about stop saying you killed. It's like, just, I get it, man. I get it. But why do we always have to be bashing or trying to let, other people know that there's something's wrong in the comedy game. They don't just who are you talking to when you do that? Comics? Right. Or your fans. Who the fuck are you talking to right now? Well, yeah, well that's the thing. I, I guess be, I mean, there's always like these controversies in the comedy community that I hear yeah, about. Sure. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not what do you guys folk like write jokes, man? <laughs> write jokes. Why do you even focus on what like I just like people will go to me. Hey, did you see what they're posting about? I'm like, no, I don't. Don't come in my feed. I guess I'm not. In, I don't care. You said you probably because you don't like comment or like other negative posts. Like, like right, it doesn't come in my news. Like feed. Yeah, it's like I like negative stuff. I mean, maybe it's just my age too. I remember even before like social media, like you're around like, like people that are just negative and they're like, "Yo, you hear what the fuck you say about so and so?" And then I'm, yeah, yeah. I used to be like, "Bro, can we talk?" I don't care. Don't tell me what they said. I don't want to know. Like I yeah. want to know, but I don't want to know because now I'm involved somehow yeah, yeah. in your shitty thing. With, I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're how you're invested, but I want out. Yeah, I want I want out. <laughs> I want out of this shit. No, I, like the funny thing is like when people like like I saw people doing it with the debate, like like critiquing like performance, but equating it yeah, yeah. kind of with watching Trump's kind of reminded me of a comic when he did. It's like does ever like do you not have a life, man? <laughs> does everything have to equate to somebody on stage? Like yeah, doing comedy, like you're so yeah. invested. You don't even you can't even come up with a better analogy. Like right. all your analogies involve you on stage. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you you like if a hurricane's coming, kind of reminds me when the hecklers yeah. are the, what? 
Like, get out of the club for a moment. There's a I'm world. Go- with Trump debate. I'm wondering who booked that, right? Am I right? Oh, yeah. Uh. It's like, dude, I think your ex thinks because you don't live life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're, you, you've been playing the role of co- you typecasted yourself in life. Like you've yeah. been playing the role of comedian so much that you're just that guy all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like imagine that just guy that just can't get off stage. Like not a joking guy, but like, like he's like in line at like a, a coffee shop, like shutting down people that are talking too loud, like a heckler. Yeah, <laughs> I'll come in your coffee shop and shit. What? <laughs> Telling the guy the call. Yo, light me when it's ready. What? Yeah, like right. when, right. <laughs> I mean, when it's ready. Like so. when my call is ready. I don't know. Okay. Like maybe it's. I just get douche chills when I see these guys do. And these are guys that are doing it for a long time. For some reason, if it's a new comic, if they, I have to, like new comics, if they're like, oh, I killed. Total tolerance. Total tolerance. Like, yeah, they're new. They're excited. Yes. They have no one to tell. Their family don't give a shit that yeah, they yeah. killed. You know. Yeah, yeah, right. Like. <laughs> yeah, the killing part. I mean, sometimes. I, I don't like. I mean, there's things I'm I'm talking uh, comics do and posts I don't like. It's uh, it's your your thing is like you know they have to everything in life has to be some post about com related to comedy. Yeah, like everything has to be related to like you have to bring in comedy into it, weave it into it. It's like you don't have any other way to make a joke. Yeah, you know who are you making who because. Your your jokes are so inside, and is that who the, who you're trying to impress always? Yeah. Your, oh, granted, I'm making the comments laugh too. Believe me, I get it. Right. You know, but guys saying they killed and the other. I, I don't like frauds. I don't like. I don't like. Fraud. I don't like someone who yeah. posts something clearly. Like for instance, I posted I was here at the MGM, and somebody like an old crew, like from Jersey City, like my old my old neighborhood. They don't know anything. So he said, yo, make that money. I mean, what am I going to go and tell him the money's shit? <laughs> I didn't yeah. like the comment. And yeah. I didn't say, you know, I worked hard to get here. Like, make it like seem like I'm getting banked because of that MGM. I'm not fucking Don Rickles in the big room. I'm, I'm you know, featuring in a comedy club. Right. You know what I mean? Some people... They make they, they put these things that they've done, and when people comment, they don't get you don't get uncomfortable with that comment. You don't try to clear it up, right? Like, like nah, I'm not really doing it. Like like I was gonna tell the guy, oh, I'm not killing it, believe me. But I just didn't comment on it. And other people like kind of kept it on point with, like, hey man, have fun, good luck, and I didn't want to take it off topic. Yeah, yeah. But normally, if a couple of people would be like, man, about time you deserve these good things, I would jump in and say. Listen, guys, this is just me at a comedy club, and the money is not great. I'm probably spent more to get here. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but other guys will leave it up there and encourage it and go, yeah, you know, finally made it to the big time. You know, like one of our friends, oh, I made it to Borgata, finally. Everybody's like, yeah, great. No, it's not great. It's not that great. Be honest, man. It's not that. It's not horrible. You're not doing fucking, <clears throat> you're not doing a one-nighter and at a firehouse in Pennsylvania for 200 bucks. Right. It's different than that. But it isn't amazing, but you lead on and people start encouraging you and you don't fucking, that doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, because this is, it's this, this is where I think um, social media hurt, com- hurt the comedy community in a way where I feel like people think they have a traction. When right, they don't, right. Like they, they're good at promoters. Bad yeah, performers, yeah, yeah. you know. These are people that make great flyers, and then you go yeah, to the yeah. show, and it's like, well, this is an open mic with a good flyer, right? <laughs> like this ain't a real show. Like right, you're right. pretending it's talk- with a good with a good photographer. Like a good photographer was there, it made yeah, the I place was talking to a newer a newer comedian who said that. Yeah. In the beginning, they see like, why is he at that show? Oh man, like I was, I forget what comic I was on. He's like, you get, I think it was John Clark. He's like, you know, you see all these. Flyers and you're like, like these pictures. Oh, they're gonna be that. Oh, they're doing that, man. Damn it! I wish I was doing that. And then you go to the room. You're like, holy fuck! It's a glorified open mic. But you don't know that as a new guy or as a regular person, you see a flyer, right? You know what I mean? And you go to the room. It's like, oh my god! It's in the basement. It's in a back room, a storage room of a restaurant. And there's seven people, and four of them are comedians. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. But I get it. 
I remember, I remember when I wasn't doing comedy and I was on my, when I stopped doing comedy for a little bit after I met you mm -hmm. and we were on my face yeah. and I stopped for those like two or three years Yeah. and you were still doing, you were doing it. You know, you were really into it in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, you still are, I'm saying, you know, you were like fucking Johnny open mic doing all kinds of, I was, ah. I was trying dude, I was performing two mics a night for like every night. <laughs> so I saw your calendar. Remember they had the calendar right on the front. Yeah. MySpace. And I met you once and we talked a couple of times. We weren't, we weren't boys yet. Yeah. And I saw your calendar and I wasn't working at all. And I was like, man, this guy, I just met him. And he's fucking everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But those places were open mics and stuff like that. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was working. So I'm like, I said, this guy, I just met him. He's just working. What the fuck am I doing sitting here in my basement playing poker with Frank? I should <laughs> be out of the goddamn house yeah. doing comedy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's just a perception you do, that people think you go on these on Facebook and your website and Twitter and you and you put yourself out there and the normal everyday Joe thinks it's something great. Right. right? But the normal every so but you're do people say they're doing it oh cuz it's all about you know perception and everything but bookers, insiders, managers, agents know it's all horse shit. Right, so exactly. Exactly. Everybody on the inside knows what you just did is horseshit. So you're trying to impress a just a guy, just a guy that go that works at AT and T. You're trying to impress him. Why? Yeah. No. That you yeah. need stroking that bad. So you need like somebody from your old high school to be like, <clears throat> "Wow, man, you're really doing it, dude." Right. Because we don't think it. Nobody in the industry thinks it. No. Well, it's funny. There's other new thing. They do like you'll get friended by a comic or like recently I got followed by somebody on Instagram. Right. And uh, he plays this uh, a, 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 another uh, comedy room that I play occasionally in the city. Right. So I was like, oh, maybe we were on a show together. I didn't get a chance to meet him that night or whatever. You know, because sometimes there's right. like, so I accepted the uh, request and I followed him back. So we're following each other. He's liking photos of mine, you know, so then I notice right. he runs a show. So he right. he asked me to be a friend, <laughs> right? So right, right, like, right. I, so I go, hey, what's up, man? I um, want to know if I can send you some avails to get on your show in the future. And right. it shows that he saw it and then never responded. I'm like, what? What? Why? Why? Why are we? Why are we networking? Social <laughs> networking? If you will not even respond. <laughs> It's only a one-way network. Apparently. It's a one-way network. And then someone's like, no, a lot of comics go on. They they follow people, so you follow them back so they can boost their followers. I'm like, what type of lunatic are you? Yeah, yeah. And why do you want comedians to follow you? We're not coming to your show. Like, they, I want real followers. Yeah. I want people that, like, want to come see me live or listen to my podcast. That's who I right. try. That's why I don't go around – Friend requesting comedians, Kyle. Like, I don't need you. Right, right, right. You're not right. coming. I need regular people. Right. <laughs> right. You know? Like, <laughs> don't... Ugh. I, yeah, I, was, I don't, It I turned don't... me off. I, I didn't know that that thing right. that people... But I, I just... It's so... Dis like, I'd ra like, I always say, I'd rather you tell me, bro, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I'm not interested. Or I'm not interested. Then just yeah, yeah. ignore... Just type right. N-O. No. I'll get it. I got it. That's like the literally the least amount you can type to get the message to me. Yeah, yeah. Need I remind you, you followed me. Yeah. <laughs> Asshole. Well, they think I want to run into this person. I do. I, I'm telling you, if I run into this person in person, I'm going to just be, I'm going to bring it up because I got to know the thought process. Yeah, yeah the, psych, the psyche behind it. I'd be like, what the fuck was the, with the no response? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what he's going to say. Oh, I didn't get it. Uh, I No, it says you saw it, so those days are over. The I didn't get it is over because it says seen. <laughs> I didn't see it, though. Oh, yeah, you didn't see it. Listen, <laughs> I see it. Look, look at around. Look at all the zombies with their faces in their phone. You see everything. <laughs> you didn't see it. Dude, I was at the cafeteria last night, and um, while there was this girl – Long blonde hair, staring down at her. I swear to God, man, I looked at her, my eyes on her. Would not take my eyes off. For the 15 minutes I was eating, she not once took her head up out of her phone. Yeah. 15 full minutes with her head 
buried in a phone. It never once came up to see what was happening in the round. There could have been chaos around her. People could have been murdered or maimed. She would have never known until she was done with her lunch. She did not leave the phone. And I was in shock. Like, like I, when I eat, I put my phone aside. I look around. I like to look at people. I like to be a part of the world. Nah, I'm like that broad. Sometimes I'm just in my phone. Sometimes I'm in my phone so much when I finally look out, I'm like, did I just come into a new realm? Like, it's like the world is new to me. <laughs> I'm just like, this is I, a nice I, world I live in. I love my technology. I love the phone. I'm on all social media. I do all social media. It's the best I can do. But when I'm not in the process of updating or tweeting, I don't, I'm not reading every single fucking Facebook post. I'm not reading every tweet. I'm not looking at every Instagram photo. So I'm just in the world. I like looking at the world. And then I'll go. When like I'm in an uncomfortable position, I don't feel like talking to somebody. Then I'll go on my phone. Yeah, I, I definitely think you know? the phone has hurt my productivity. Before yep. smartphones, I used to be way more productive, writing and creatively. The, yeah, the yeah, smartphone yeah. has really. What was it? it <clears throat> there was an interesting thing I read. Uh, it was uh, I'm going to try and incorporate it in my life because like it was like about productivity and like getting shit done. And, you know, right. the phone obviously takes that away from me, but it was about projects like writing. And it was right. uh, the guy said, uh, don't tell people, don't talk about your project. You say he was talking about screenplays. He goes, right, right. don't talk about your screenplay to people. Just write your screenplay. He said, because when you talk about it and you tell someone the whole story, right, it puts something in your mind like you're actually working on it. Like you've like done right, right. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives you a satisfaction, like you flesh something out when you actually right. didn't. And right. he's like, and then you just don't write on it. And then you tell the next, right. and then it loses its fun. It loses its, yeah, the yeah. spark that you had. And I I totally related with that because I've done that so many times where I've right. talked about something I wanted to do so much. And then did nothing and with did it. And did nothing with it. And then years go by, and now it doesn't even apply to me no more. And it's like, oh, that was yeah, a good yeah. idea. But I'm like, Wow. Like I just never I, – I heard that like three days ago and I'm like I've just never heard it put that way. And then right. like then in hindsight, you're like I can uh, rattle off five projects that I've done that way. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's such a good oh, way I, of looking at it. I totally believe that's right. a true thing. So instead of talking about it, just get to work on it. Just work on it. Just yeah, work yeah. on it. You know, just do it. Don't tell right. nobody your I like it's not it's it wasn't even don't tell nobody your ideas because somebody will steal it. Don't tell nobody no, no, your yeah. ideas because you ain't gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, you're just gonna kill it in your mind. Yeah, and I'm like wow, like that totally hit me hard. You kill the excitement and the momentum. You do because uh, when I talked about like three weeks ago or whenever it was about that idea I had, dude, I woke up from a dead sleep with some idea and wrote a bunch in my phone about it. I wrote uh, like a scene. I wrote character names. Yeah, all kinds of shit. And then talk to you about it the next day, and I haven't touched it since. Yeah. So, like, if you write it, then you talk about it. Now you at least have it down. Absolutely. And now you're tweaking it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I find that to be true with, like, like planning on recording my comedy special. It's like I talk I, – I can talk about what I want so much. Really. I visualize it. I know exactly what I want it to look like. I could see the right. shots, but it's like – and I keep talking yeah, about yeah. it with my camera guys, and I'm like, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Though I'm, I'm, I do have a show at the place I want to record it in to see uh -huh. how I feel at that place, to see like okay. what the room feels like. I'm doing a show there in Which November. Which place? Uh, the Saint oh. in Asbury Park. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, the Asbury Park. And that last night's show, there was a the guy who uh, run, runs or owns uh, the Stone Pony was at the comedy show last night. Oh, really? Because he came in to see the Stones. But Mick Jagger canceled due to um, coronavirus. Oh shit! So, so they just he came to the comedy show. I've been at the Stone Pony many times, high watching music when I was younger. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we it's, still. It's, it's clean. He goes years ago in the heyday. You know they were killing it seven days a week. Then it dipped, and they were just doing it. now. But he goes this past summer and the past couple of years, he goes. They've been back back in the day again. Yeah, dude, I saw Green Day there, like in a small club, like when Green Day was coming up with that. Oh, first. Really? Oh yeah, I saw Drama Rama there, fucking uh, Chili Peppers, like 
like these big right. bands, like in that small fucking, yeah, I would yeah, yeah. come out just dirty from moshing and just yeah, yeah. fucking tripping on mesk. And I was I stone pony. <laughs> it's like anytime I drive past a stone pony, it's like I don't think I've been in there sober. I've never been in there. Yeah, no, one time sober because a guy I went to meetings with his band played there on like an off night we went, so I did, I did experience it. And we were, so. and the guy was talking about Berkeley, the Berkeley Cotteret. Oh yeah, That's... and he was like, how he's like he's been there since like all the owners. He's like, he like I'm like he goes that place was great, and then it went to a shithole, and now it's on its way back up again. Oh, it's definitely on its way, but dude, I I helped run a convention there when I don't even think I. Don't, <laughs> when we ran the convention there, I'm like, who signed a contract? Does anybody even own this place? There's nobody here. Yeah. Like, I know. Who was like the shining? Yeah, yeah. Bergen did one too. And they had like, smelled like every room was flooded. Yeah. It smelled like that damp. Um, and uh, the elevators were broken. So you know, 900 people got out of the New Year's Eve convention and the elevators weren't working. Yeah, yeah. So everybody had to walk up the stairs to get the meetings. And it was fucking in their rooms. Asbury's um, coming back, man. It's got a good vibe. Yeah. There's another bar I want to check out when I'm there called the Wonder Bar. That's a popular music venue. But I like that area. Right. It's like restaurants and shit. I think it's just yeah, yeah. it's like, it really screams Jersey. You uh-huh. know what I mean? It's like, just like it's, your description of it. What restaurants and shit? Like <laughs> I like that area. No, but like it's got those it really screams Jersey. You know? No, it's just got like those iconic images. It'd be a good place yeah, for yeah. photos and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm thinking if everybody votes yes on the casino thing, it's either going to go, it's either going to go in in the Meadowlands or Asbury Park. Yeah, Asbury would be amazing, but I don't know. I don't think they'll do it. I think Meadowlands probably makes more sense for casino people. Yeah, I think any because Asbury's else, still far for like city people to get out of. Yeah, I think anywhere else other than that, than the Meadowlands is just like you just keep in Atlantic City, right? Anywhere else in Jersey, I mean, Asbury's like, good. It's a little closer. You know, Asbury Park is a little. It's a lot closer to New York. New York is only an hour. Just like, just like, uh, if they were going to Mannery, Mannery Lodge is an hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you, you still got that the beach and still got like, you know, other things to bring people to gambling. Yeah. You just hope uh, Asbury like, doesn't turn into Atlantic city where it's like, okay, this casino comes in. Now the next guy wants to put his casino in that it becomes just this big building monstrosity. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. shit town. Right. Like I think they're trying to keep it more like this music artsy. Yeah. You know, which is good because it is good. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, Meadowlands, it makes sense because, yeah, if the one casino works and you want to build another one, it just works yeah. over there. Yeah, absolutely. You got yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, the football team. You got, you yeah. know what I mean? You got the racetrack. You got, get rid of that fucking mall. Get rid of the mall. You got, I mean, even you have the arena there. I don't know what the fuck they're, I think they just hold concerts there now, right? Nobody they don't does. Have there. The, I, think it's, I don't think anything goes there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, they shut that down a year ago. All right. So, yeah, you have that space. Fucking get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's all a casino. Not that I need a casino, but um, believe me. Believe me. I don't need to be around casinos. Um, I can just see you at home in Maywood just glaring at your window with the fucking Secaucus, like. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, just staring like this. Thing. It's so funny. We talked about this. Four days ago, we talked about five days ago on the last podcast about the casinos, and I was like, you know what? When I get older and my kids are older, fuck it, I'll gamble if I want to. And now, five days later, after me being here and not having a successful week thus far, I am like, no, I don't need to be around casinos. Yeah, what, what have you been <laughs> playing? You've been playing poker. It doesn't matter. I'm not, it doesn't. You know, just like we were talking about writing the script and why I put it out there. If you're not going to, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it just isn't good. Just as in, yeah, I've come to the conclusion that you shouldn't perform at casinos if you want to keep your money. <laughs> but or or you should look at your casino gigs as like this is my vacation. Right, like right. like how like when I go to Aruba, I know I'm coming back like three grand less than I wanted. Than, than, yeah. you know, so you just gotta. I think you gotta look at your casino gigs like this is my summer it's vacation. Either, it's either you look at it responsibly and say you can't spend the money, or you which is not gonna happen. Well, 
the only way it would happen is if I didn't bring money. Right. I shouldn't bring money because I don't get paid until the end of the week. So I shouldn't bring money. Right. And say the seven out of 10 casinos I've done in the past year, I didn't gamble a lot of money away. Like maybe 40 bucks, 20 bucks, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause so yeah. like that doesn't, cause they're like that, one nighters too, typically. Yes. It was so one, you, two in and out. And I didn't spend any money. Right. But, um, I didn't, I didn't gamble at all. I didn't go in the casino. And there was the one in Chicago. I didn't go in the, I did. Yeah. But it was like very little, like 40, but it was nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, for the most part, this one here, you're right. Like I'm walking around like, what the fuck am I doing? I've gone two days, three days. I got to fucking do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and the third day, you know, is, is where it went bad. But, um, yeah, how many times can you see the Hoover dam? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's, it's a damn. That's a big damn. Yeah. Um, just to see you hanging out there every day to not gamble. We do. It's the only place to go. <laughs> I just like to look at water falling. Uh, but uh, there was a woman sitting at the machine next to me, right? Uh huh. Wheel of Fortune machine. You know, it's just so funny. It's just, it's just the same sensibility, the same degenerate gambling mindset. She was down to her last dollar. Yeah. And she got a spin. Okay. And so she goes, ah, oh. she looks at me. She goes, I was just down to my last dollar and I got a spin. I was like, oh, great. And she's like, I don't even care what it is. I don't even care what it is. Fucking, I'll just take it. Boom. She hits the button and it gave her 30 quarters, which is what? 10, eight bucks, mm-hmm. whatever it turns out to be. And she's like, that's what the fuck? And she just snapped. And I'm like, two milliseconds ago you said whatever it is you're fine with yeah <laughs> and it gave you the least amount it could have gave you and you weren't fine with it because you're a gambling degenerate and you want to keep gambling but that's not enough to gamble with so she was all happy until the doubt coming and she was right back to miserable again that's what i kept saying i'm like ah, it's not a big deal come on fuck it is a big deal oh my you god you think gamblers because you think like the misery is part of the like I think sometimes they like it a little bit. It is no, it is a part of. Well, it's all part of it. It's like when I smoked crack. I mean, like Jones in for a hit was probably my favorite part. And everybody's like, "How come?" I'm like, "The parent," because that was the biggest part of it. If you're not, if you don't enjoy the jonesing for another hit, then you're in the wrong drug. <laughs> you spend most of your time jonesing for hits. Yeah, no, I hate. I well, that's what was the weird thing about when I did it when I was younger. I hated jonesing. I, right. I always like I always had you know it's just like you build up this fantasy in your head as you're going to get drugs like this is going to be this amazing night where I'm just I'm just going to feel great and I, you like totally forget the jonesing and then you yeah. get it and then you're like oh, what the fuck am I doing this for I, 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 you know I never forget the jonesing I knew what I was getting into every single time I smoked crack and the jonesing was my way of I was so creative when it came when I jonesed I became so creative on a hu- on how to hustle money out of people. Yeah. My brain would work magic when I was Jones. That's the weird thing about right. drugs. Your brain works magic coming up with criminal activity, but mm-hmm. like never magic coming up with like positive plans for life. <laughs> it gets, no. It's like, <laughs> like I, I'm not going to put the I, calculator. I could put together a heist, no problem on Coke, but if I could never come up with a business plan for like uh... that's not what you're entering into the data system it <laughs> no. depends on what you enter if you want to get if you want to get positive <laughs> no. to come out you we used to try we used to, we used to try it my band used to try and write music we thought oh, this coke's gonna get us like creative like we're gonna fucking oh, no. crank out <laughs> no <laughs> Dude, those guitars oh. were just untuned on the ground while we're figuring out plan to get more blow <laughs> like it's wait but we're supposed to be focus. strumming a couple ditties here coming up with a be stars. Yeah, I didn't even, we didn't try. I didn't try any kind of creativity angle. Oh, okay. I got high, sat in a fucking hotel room or in my room, just kept getting high, just kept getting high and kept thinking of ways to get higher. That was my whole reason for getting high. I was like, once I get high, I'll be able to figure out more ways to get high. Yeah. That was all I did. So gambling is almost the same thing. It's like the, the lows are part of the whole fucking thing. I want, I don't want their lows. But I know they're coming. Right. I know it's coming. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? The biggest problem, see, <clears throat> as far as for me, gambling, the biggest problem from that I have is that I legitimately don't really have the money to lose. Right. And I get desperate before I even start gambling to get money so I can get out of a hole. Mm. Not even with gambling. So I'll look at life and be like, man, I really need to. And then I start looking at my calendar and I get panicky. And I'm like, I'm here. Let me put a couple hundred in the machine. Maybe something will hit. Won't be a lot, but maybe something will hit. Help me pay a couple of bills. That's what goes in my mind. Yeah. And then I lose 200. And then I go, wow. Now, not only do my bills get paid, I'm now $200 shy of paying any other bills. Hmm. You know what I mean? Sounds awesome. So, like, that's my problem. Like, when things are well and my life is fine and all the things are taken care of, I don't a lot don't think about gambling that much. Mm. I think about playing poker all the time, but I never go and play poker when I'm at a casino. Why? Which is stupid because – I notice you do the machines a lot whenever I'm with you. Because that to me is where I think if I get lucky, I'm going to win big and then I'll take care of me and my family. That's straight up why I do it. Because the quicker big bonus bigger instead of buck. chipping away at a poker table. If, if at a poker table, i got to stay 10, 10, 12 hours to maybe to make three, 400. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't want to invest the time right now. I love playing poker. I love the game, but I need money. So I do these stupid things when I'm desperate. Mm. Like I played, I never played a lottery. Yeah. But recently in the summer when I was broke, every time I had 10, 11 bucks, I would play lottery hoping I would hit. I hit one time the lottery. You know what I mean? Yeah, I still do the lottery. I still do the scr- I like the scratch offs. I do them occasionally. I'll do like right. I just want the win for life's. Like I, yeah, a, a nice little win for life. Yeah, yeah. I want to pick three straight, two hundred and something dollars, right? Uh huh. That's it. But I was desperate. Like I was I'm I was desperate. Like, so I looked at my when I'm when I look at my calendar and I got like my bills are all paid, I don't get desperate for money. Yeah. That's when I gamble. So if I'm sitting here and I have no money and I'm looking out at the time, like, you know what? I'm just going to throw a little money in. Fuck it. We'll see what we're doing. It's never to say, I want to have some fun. Right. You know what I mean? I never just put in 200 bucks to have some fun. I'm putting 200 bucks because I want this to fucking hit so I can have some money. Yeah, it don't sound fun. <laughs> no. So. No, but I think that's like, I mean, that's the perception I get whenever I've been in casinos. You could just spot the people that have what you have you know what i mean it's just i'm like it's almost like i feel like winning for them would be like taking it like it's good for like the moment but i think they enjoy this the chase of it the misery of it the the right it's like the whole package the whole package it is it is you know i I don't really like where a guy like me is you know like i'm like all excited and then i yeah yeah. there's a possibilities it'd be great then i go and i lose a little bit i'm like what am i doing with my life it's like joe you've lost 20 dollars. your life is fine (laughs) (laughs) you're actually pretty good you know you like i'm this is how i know i'm not a compulsive gambler or i don't have that gambling bug like it was like uh when that time we were in uh, pittsburgh went to wheeling west virginia to that uh, oh, yeah, casino, yeah. and like I won ninety bucks on a uh, on a penny slot, and right. I'm like, cash out, my night's over. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. like I went and bought like a, the most expensive steak that night. I'm like, I would never spend this much. This is on the casino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was totally like I felt like I won the greatest dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I gave up. I was like, no, it ain't gonna get better than this. I just won ninety dollars. Uh-huh. I'm fucking loaded. I. This it's so fun. I got this week. I put in a couple. I put in some money, whatever the case is, and I won. I was down to like very little money, and I hit for exactly brought me right back to the dollar amount I had put in. Yeah. And I was like, nice. And I put the money away, and I felt so good for the rest of the night. I didn't gamble. I went did the show, had the show, got some to eat, went upstairs, watched some TV. Never went back down. Felt great. I was exactly where I wanted to be. Back to where I started. Yeah. Good enough. And then during the day Wednesday, I'm walking around. La, la, la. Got nothing going on. I went outside 
watching all the news reporters get in the bus to go to the debate. I was like, walked outside, walked down the strip, walked back into the MGM on the other side. And I walked to this by this machine that the night before I wanted to throw 20 bucks in, mm-hmm. but there was someone sitting at it. So I was like, oh, no one's there. Let me go throw 20 in. Mm-hmm. And that $20, I swear to God, and I'm not going to give the dollar amount, but let's just say it was way more than $20. Twenty-four dollars. Oh, a little look like there. <laughs> <laughs> this is it number thirty dollars? <laughs> went up to thirty dollars. <laughs> this guy's out of control. <laughs> so he put a straight jacket on him. <laughs> yeah, so it went more than twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel I you know whatever I, you're like I'm performing a casino. I'm a, I always. I, I I feel bad for you. I feel like as if like a friend of mine from the meetings is like, yeah, I gotta, I go, gotta go wait tables at the crack house tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a waiter be like, oh, you sure you should do? I just need the money, man. They they, they hired waiters, and I'm a waiter. And uh, what are you serving? Crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Oh uh, no, I I, I can I can sit and dwell in it. I, mean, I have not. I. Yesterday, I got a little. Like you said, at least impressed. your kids are older, and you don't. It doesn't matter yeah. no more. <laughs> that's the only grace I got. <laughs> that's the grace you got. With you, yeah. That's like that. That my kid, like my son's got a good job. I mean, like he has a lot of. He puts his money in the bank, buys what he wants to buy. If he eats, he doesn't eat. I don't give a fuck. You had money, you should have ate. Right. My daughter's got a job. She's been making it happen. So yeah. Everybody seems to be, be chipping away. Good. The money I'm going to get from the gig is paying most of my bills. I just have my calendar sent to me. I looks like I'm going to be okay till the second week of December. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. Good. Good. You know what I mean, and then, then I'll figure out from the second week of December on. I got to try and get out there to like MC a show that you're like on out there, Brad Garrett's maybe next year. Well, Something. I'm hoping. I mean, I'm doing really good this week. I'm hoping that. Um, They'll bring me back as a headline the next time. That'd be cool. Now they bring back like it's not like a lot of clubs like this. So uh, they bring back like Ralph Harris is is I think this is like the third time he's headlined this year. Eddie Ift is headlined thirty or three or four times this year. Yeah, because it's Vegas. It's different audiences. It's not like yes, yeah. So I'm hoping I can get into that rotation. I mean, Ed likes me, who's a manager. Paul likes me, who's Brad's brother. Brad likes me. Everybody likes me, so I'm hoping that the next time maybe I can pop into that headliner spot. If that's the case, then maybe I can bring you out. That'll be cool. I like to do some Vegas, lose my money gambling. Be nice. And then, well, you know what? To be honest, I, you, oh, I, yeah, or go to the Hoover I Dam. Had, though I don't like heights. I went to the Hoover. It's not that high. Um, when I was a kid, my mom peeked me over to look, and I just threw my body on the ground and grabbed the earth. I was afraid. <laughs> I hug the earth. I'm like, okay, we can go back now to circus, circus. Thank you. <laughs> um, it wouldn't be if I had a little more extra scratch to not gamble. To like, if I had a little money and I it wasn't by myself, I can go do some sightseeing and hang out, walk around, maybe get dinner somewhere else. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I just, but I didn't want to do that. I mean, I had no car. I don't want to walk anywhere. Like, what for? What? What am I doing? Now walking in Vegas sucks. Yeah, it's not. You're just walking past buildings that are casinos. It's all that's happening. It's all there's yeah, you're like, nah, I can stay in my casino. Same thing. Ex- they're not 100%. all that much different. They're not. Last night. The only one that looks a little nicer is that Italian one where they got the fucking gondolas and shit. The Bellagio? No, oh, not no, the Bellagio. Caesars? No. Caesar. No. The fucking nah. no, the other one. With the fucking gondolas, the river and shit that's in there, you fucking take boat rides. Uh is it, no, it's uh, what's the other the one? The big atta- the the Palazzo, Palazzo is that where it is? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I got some number. Or yeah, fucking yeah. Paris or wherever the fuck they have nice shit. Fucking, well, that's not Italian. You can't say no, <laughs> no. But <laughs> so one of them has gondolas. Oh, all right, um, <laughs> I um, gotta know now. I gotta Google that shit. No, there's a lot of nice places. And I don't go to clubs. The Venetian. That's what I was thinking of. The Venetian. Yeah, yeah. Palazzo. Okay. Palazzo's nice, too. I think it's connected to that. 
<laughs> the Venetian um, buffet was supposed to be killer, right? And then me and James went the last time we were here. Everybody talked about the Venetian. And it wasn't. I was like, okay. When me and Carrie went, everyone's like, dude, you got to do the Bellagio buffet. I felt like Bellagio. I was in. A, I, I felt like I was in like a my college cafeteria. It was shit. Really? Yeah. I I just the way people talk it up. I thought it, it wasn't even like the ambiance was even good. It was like it wasn't like fancy right. or nothing. Actually, the Venetian wasn't bad. The Bellagio, I heard it wasn't. Yeah. It's, a, it's hyped up. I heard the best one is that uh, one that's off the Palms. I heard they're they're. Uh, oh really? They're the one that's like off the beaten path a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I heard they're. The, is that the one I'm thinking of? The Palms. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. The win. No, nah, it's off the beaten path. It's got to be Palms. Yeah. Palms. I'm looking at a map of Vegas right now. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, look at the window of Vegas. I'm going to look and see what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> no, I think it was the Palms, yeah. <laughs> you want to see? Look, see, Joe? See what's going on out there? Yeah. Definitely wasn't. Yeah, it's the Palms. I stayed at uh, Mandalay Bay. Beautiful hotel, but it's at the beginning of the strip. So whenever you want to go somewhere, you're like you're starting at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, you're starting in Wyoming. Well, it's like right across the street from where you're at, right? Isn't it like... Yeah, it's not far. Not far. I can see beautifully from my window the Trump Tower. Ah, the Trump Tower. Do you know that the... I didn't even know this. That the Trump Tower is one... Oh, the Rio. The Rio. That's the one with the good buffet. Oh, okay. Okay, there you go. Now we can go back. You know the Trump Tower is one floor bigger than the wind? Oh, just to be a dick? Yeah, because he hates Steve Wynn. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fucking pathetic? See, but you know what it is about, like, before Trump ran for president? Yeah, yeah. When he was, I liked him as a reality TV star. I enjoyed him. I, I used to watch The Apprentice with my wife. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that I like about him as a as regular a citizen. As a, as a regular I'm dude. a fan of Trump, the non-presidential candidate. Right. I like him. I, you know, yeah, yeah. well, like, a lot came to light with him in this presidential election that I didn't know about him. Right, right. But stuff like that have been like, I love that guy. He went one yeah, floor yeah. higher. Like, right, right. I, I like that sort of attitude with billionaires. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to beat you. Right, right. That endeared me to him, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. I had it. I used to have his video. I mean, his, his uh, board game. I didn't even know he had Trump. one. Oh, yeah. Trump board game. I had it in the 80s. It was it was late 80s. It was like almost like a Monopoly. Right? Yeah. But, uh, each each like big property had like like say like so it had like the Trump Tower, Trump's uh, Taj Mahal, the uh, cas- all the casinos, right? And all the other like there's other properties had like like a box with a little slot with a slide in the middle. You put money, so every time you landed on it, you had to pay like a little bit to that to that property. Yeah. And then your whole goal was to try to buy that property that people have already been putting money in. Ah, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So like you know, there's money in that box. Your whole goal is to try to get to buy that. Hmm. Never even heard of it. That's insane. Yeah. Guess it wasn't a Trump board game. Trump board game. Yeah, it's the same picture he has on that fucking book. Oh, the art of the deal. Yeah. Did you see him and Hillary doing that like roast last night? I did. Actually, I, they, Trump made me laugh, man. He he did some of his jokes Trump were pretty had, good. I would say the funniest line. I say. Hillary had the most creative joke. Trump's best line was uh, Michelle Obama gave a speech. Oh, yeah. And they loved it. Melania gave the same exact speech. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was great. His that pardon me bad. his pardon me joke was good, but he kept going with it. If he would have ended yeah, it at that. The tag of it? Yeah, the tag didn't work. He just sort of ended it at that. It was good. Yeah, and but Hillary's. Uh, he had some other good ones where he said he used to like you guys are fans of carpenters. Like he tried equating himself to Jesus because his dad hired. Yeah, yeah. It, it was he's like, I only did it for three weeks, so you know. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Hillary's joke about the Statue of Liberty, I think, was the most creative, well written joke. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, not that she wrote it, but it was the best joke. Yeah, that was how good. How about the girls? How about what's her name's tits behind? Not to be disrespectful or Trump like, but behind the podium, the one broad with the red. Oh, with, the, with the arm, like the gloves yeah, on. 
she kept trying to cover up her tits. Yeah. So her, somebody must have been texting her, your tits are showing. So she kept putting her arms, like, trying to cover up her cleavage. Yeah. But they were – that was a one major reason why I kept tuned in for the whole thing. <laughs> it was uncomfortable as fuck. It was the the reason the, the thing. All right, I don't like Trump, not even a little bit. But he said one thing that I respected. Uh huh. In the beginning, when he said a joke about Hillary, it was like a little lighthearted joke. He said, "This is so corny." Yeah. And he was meant like this whole thing we're doing is corny. Yeah. <laughs> and I respected that, right. especially in the past years. It was like it was a nice. It was part of tradition, and the and the and the candidates made it lighthearted, and it was it was not bad. They hate each other so much that there was no way it would have looked genuine or authentic. Yeah, well, you know what they were saying on MSNBC today. That one guy said he was watching it on C-SPAN, where they don't cut to com- cut to like people in the studio every time there's a break in the action. They just yeah. He's constantly on the camera. He's like, Trump's helping her with her chair. Like, was very... Right, right, right. But, like, the, the other news co- stations cut away from all that. Right, right. Let me tell you something. But I'm just saying, yeah. forget from that. Their hatred against one another in this election... Yeah. ...wouldn't be put aside for a little couple of ribs. A yeah. rib, yeah. Nah, it's, yeah. It's other. And, I didn't, and it was just... It would have been impossible to be real. Ever. Totally. When Mitt Romney and, and Obama did, they didn't they might have had political barbs when they were on the campaign trail, but uh-huh. they didn't hate each other as much as these two candidates hate each other. Nah. Well it's because it's gotten real personal, like in their private yeah. life. It's never so, gotten that dirty. Yeah. Never, I don't think it's ever we've ever had this dirty of a of an election. No. no. Yo, uh real quick, we've been recording for an hour. I'm going to wrap it up soon because I'm going to take Carrie out to dinner, hopefully. Um, okay. Have you seen uh, – did you go see Mike Tyson yet? I wanted to ask you about that. Not tonight. I'll oh, tonight? tonight? Okay. Yeah, well, last night I hung out with George Wallace. Oh, yeah. We, we talked about that on our earlier phone call, but that's awesome, man. George Wallace is like, like just like that great road dog comedian that's just like, – And everyone knows him, man, and he's, uh, he's fucking funny. And uh, I was – I love, you know, I see these guys, we see road dogs, right? Road hacks. Yeah. Right? And these guys have been doing it for 25 years, doing the same fucking act. <clears throat> and this guy's not that, you know? And um, he comes to the club, he lives in Vegas, and he came to the club Wednesday night and Thursday night with a big legal size notepad, goes on stage and was like, I'm going to be working some new jokes out. Now, if they don't work, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> but I'm going to try them. So then you go, let's see, number one, he had a pen with him. And you go, he'll just say it real quick, say a joke, like, and if it lasts, like, yeah, it's good, right? That's good. Now nah, that one works. Okay, number two. And he just, that's what he was doing. Right. And and then we would tag, like, Ralph Harris wrote a tag from two nights in a row. I wrote a tag from last night. And he asked, pay attention, maybe help me write tags. Mm. And I appreciate that, man. That's a fucking guy who's creating. He's been doing it since the 70s, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. He told me stories about he told me stories about watching Richard Pryor work out for three months, and like the first month, Richard Pryor went on stage and was it was no laughs for a whole hour, no laughs. Yeah. In the <clears> second <throat> month, got a little laughs. He goes in the third month, um, got more laughs. Fourth month, live at Sunset Strip is recorded. He's like, you know what I mean? Like he told me that story. I'm like, fuck, that's what I appreciate. That's watching a guy work and whittle a joke. From an hour and making it tight. I mean, that's the big yeah. Part. Well, dude, Pryor released. I think it was called Live and Smoking or something. I don't know if it was that. He he has a live um, spot uh, video of him like doing new shit and he's and bombing, bombing. Yeah, yeah. And he released it. Yep. And then you know you could see the start of some other jokes that were big down the road. Right. You know. So here we were talking and, about that. He was. And I, we went across to the Tropicana where I met uh, Don Rickles' daughter, Mindy Rickles, who's doing comedy. And That's someone I'd like to see before he croaks. He's with this tonight and tomorrow at the Orleans, but I 8 o'clock show and I can't get there. Mm. So I sold it. He, now he does it sitting down. Yeah. You know, 
But uh, they say as like this constant joke, he'll walk out like when he was walking out, and he'd be like, "The shit I do for a hundred thousand dollars." <laughs> 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 but um yeah so hanging out with him was pretty cool and then i'll go back to see uh to see mike tyson tonight i'll stay late and watch him dude what a week though you got a picture with george wallace get to talk shit with george wallace watch him work his stuff and then you can you you're gonna get to hang out with iron mike tyson dude i know that is like the most like i mean he's just legendary it's just like Mike get, Tyson. You can't get a, I think, a bigger sports figure. No, no. People say that when Mike Tyson's in the room, like even the biggest celebrities are like, it's fucking Tyson. Like, right, right. Like, like biggest like movie celebrity, like yo, Mike Tyson, man, because he just, yeah, yeah, like, it's just because he's got just that crazy life. Like not only an amazing boxer, but a total lunatic. Like, just, right, right. Like, not the a whole so package much. face yeah, yeah, tattoo. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say that it packs out, but with a lot of like Europeans, like Irish and Australians, they love them. The Irish guys love them, and and they're like you know, and Americans kind of like pulled back. I'm like because in America, all these controversies, we're very sensitive. Ireland, Australia, they don't give a fuck if you ate a guy's ear, man. Who cares? Yeah. They don't care. They're dirty fighters too, man. They're like, we're scrap, we're scrappers, man. You ate a guy's ear. You should have ate a guy's ear. What took you so long? Yeah, but they're like, if you want us to come follow you, better bite somebody's ear. You better eat an ear. What do you mean you haven't eaten an ear? (laughs) I'm buying tickets to your show. So I heard it's not the same show that he does. That one at HBO. The one at HBO was serious. Oh, okay. This one is more funny stories about his life. That's why he does the comedy club. Oh, cool. You know, you have to tell us all about it on next week's podcast. Yeah, man. So I'm kind of excited about that. It's oh, I good. would do. I would literally go out there to perform. If they're like, you're going to like, we got no money for you. We'll fly. You'll give you enough to fly, but you're going to hang out with Mike Tyson. I'd be like, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's go. Let's do it. So free food and hang out with Mike Tyson. Or even, yeah, yeah. dude, they can tell me George Wallace. They'd be like, hey, you want to open for George Wallace for seven nights in Vegas for airfare and food? I'd be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Right? Yes. Are people but turning George this gig was, down? <laughs> but George, when we were hanging out at the Tropicana, he was, we were talking about, uh, he went <clears throat> last week, and I saw pictures of it. Him and Seinfeld did like 12 spots on Friday night. Wow! In the city, they just bounced around. Oh yeah, I bet saw the pictures. They did Danger Fields and stuff. Yeah, they did Gotham, Stan, New York. I think Broadway. They did them all. The Strip. Um, but then he did Sunday at Gotham mixtape, and um, yeah, he was just really cool, man. He was just cool. He was, he took my joke. He put it into his act. He's like, yeah, that's going in. Mm-hmm. Um, he is doing a cruise. He's leaving today. To go to Miami, they're doing a. He's doing like this jazz cruise with Wanda Sykes, um, Bill Bellamy, mm. uh, a couple other big comics, and wow. a bunch of musicians. Wow. It's like a three day cruise. They do it every year. And he's the one of the big acts on it. Probably making a thousand dollars easy. Easy, Grant. easy. <laughs> they made it pay his pay for his flight. Ah, they better. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you're having a good time out in Vegas, and uh, you know, yeah, that's good, man. Having a good time. I saw I, I, real quick. I saw Norm McDonald yesterday, also standing in the MGM. He had like five guys around. Him. He must be playing poker because he wasn't dressed. He was like t-shirt and on. And I was like, "Fuck it!" And I said out loud, walking by myself, I was like, "Fucking Norm McDonald!" Like that. I said it out loud. I, I would too. And then I was like, "Well, now you can't go over there and talk to him. <laughs> Just keep walking." <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I couldn't be. I couldn't clearly go over and go. Hi, I'm a comedian. I was working on a show downstairs earlier. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to spark this conversation up after I just said out loud to myself, "Oh, there's Norm McDonald." Yeah. Just, just got to keep walking, man. Hopefully, I'll meet him another time. That was one of my favorite Mark Marin podcasts I ever heard. Was the Norm McDonald one? That's one of the best ones. Especially we were talking about gambling. Um, yeah, yeah. You, have you ever listened to that episode? I think I have. That's a great episode, man. Yeah, yeah. Norm McDonald. He's just the one of the funniest dudes. My favorite Norm McDonald story is the one Artie Lang said 
Artie Lang said uh, he, he, him and uh, Norm MacDonald are buddies. And uh, Artie Lang just moved out to L.A. and got Mad TV and just got some money. Right. You know, got like his first check. Like, holy shit, I could buy really whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, So he yeah. went out and bought some uh, a green leather jacket. And he walked okay. up and he went to Norm's house and he walked in. Norm goes, uh, what do we say? He goes, uh, congratulations, congratulations on the Masters win, Fonzie. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious it's like the perfect fucking congratulations yeah, yeah. on the masters win fonzie <laughs> like you're like that's a brilliant comedian right there brewer did well i saw brewer in 2000 at some club uh-huh. and he, he did because he does norm mcdonald's voice yeah and he's doing a norm mcdonald like at a he goes in a saying live pitch meeting we're all pitching ideas and some guys like uh somebody's like so all right, this bit is where Norm is going to be, and Norm just comes and is like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Like, <laughs> 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 like, if he didn't like the bit, he ain't doing it. He don't care. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Well, let's wrap up another episode. I'm hungry. I got to go get some food. All right, bro. Thinking Chinese. Nice. nice. No gig tonight? It's Friday. No, no gig tonight. I'm off for a couple of weeks. My next gig is the first Thursday of November. Okay. Uh, at the Newtown Theater in New Hope, PA. I mean, I'm going to try and pop around and work some stuff out in the next two weeks, but yeah. But November, I have a ton of gigs. So if you go to my webpage, okay, so. November's full, and then my career's over around right after Thanksgiving. Oh, oh me too. So just letting you guys know that. <laughs> <laughs> so all right everybody thanks for listening um go to mike to see where mike's playing uh go to joe fernandez.net uh please subscribe at iHeartRadio, uh stitcher app itunes and uh google play it's on now so uh you've been listening to all in our heads 